In this video, we're gonna tackle the last experiment in our section, which is basically the analysis of the, uh, the frequency spectrum of a square wave. So as you can see here, we are generating a square wave of 1K Hertz and amplitude of one volt peak to peak from the function generator and this signal is being fed into channel one of our oscilloscope. I've already completed the setup here, so you can see that in the oscilloscope screen, you have the yellow curve as the original square wave in time domain, the x-axis is in time, and as well as a purple curve, uh, which basically is the spectrum of the square wave, and it's in frequency domain, the x-axis symbolizes frequency. Uh, as we already discussed in our last video, square waves are made up of uh, sinusoidal waves at odd harmonics, which means that a 1k hertz square wave, it's a sum of a sinusoid of some, uh, of some scaling factor at 1k hertz plus a sinusoid of some diminishing uh, coefficients uh, at subsequently 3k hertz, 5k hertz, 7k hertz, uh, 9k hertz, and so on. Odd harmonics, right? So we're going to validate that using our oscilloscope here. Right. So the way we're doing this is we can use the cursor function to help us read the frequency of each of these peaks as well as the difference between these uh, peaks, different peaks. So the way to do this is you go to cursors here. Uh, let's first verify these frequency of these peaks so that we want cursors on the x-axis. Remember x-axis is in frequency. The source need to be on the purple curve, which is the uh, frequency spectrum. Let's do either x1 or x2. And let's move the cursor around. So you can see there's a vertical line moving across the screen as I'm adjusting the cursor. This is actually our cursor. Let's align the cursor with the first peak. Okay, so you can see that there's a label. Oops. There's a label on the screen saying that, okay, the cursor right now is at 1.06, 1.05 kHz, which is close to what we expect, right? Because one of the components of a square wave is a sine wave at the exact same fundamental harmonic of 1 kHz. Right, that's where the first peak is. The second peak, let's still try to move the x-axis and then long, uh, align it with the second peak. Okay, 2.99. 2.99 or 3 kHz exactly. That's what we expect, right? The second, uh, the third harmonic, which is one of the odd harmonics. You can keep doing it. Uh, just make sure that all the all the other peaks are at the frequencies you expect. So the third peak is at 5 kHz. Fourth peak is at 7 kHz roughly. And the fifth peak is at 9kHz. It's at around 9 kHz. So that's it. Uh, we're done validating the uh, The, that the fact that the square wave is a sum of infinite sum of odd harmonics sinusoid at odd harmonics right so uh, in this part we ask you to fill in the chart regarding the measured value in db scale of all the subsequent peaks when it's comparing to the first peak right the way to do that is just in dB scale, it takes a difference between the values of the peak value 
of each subsequent peak with the reference at the first peak. And the way to do this is because we want to read the difference in dB scale, we, we now go to the Y axis. Still go to cursors and choose Y1, the first cursor at Y axis, and we can fix this axis. Now you see that there's a horizontal cursor that's moving around. We want to align this cursor level to the first peak. Okay, we're done. Right now, let's adjust the second Y2 cursor. And let's first align the Y2 cursor with the second peak. And now you can see that on the screen we have the delta Y. Delta Y really means the, the distance between the two cursors is minus 9.5 dB here. So this is the exact value you should put in uh, regarding the measured value in dB scale for the third harmonic. And then the question arises, where's the second harmonic though? So keep in mind that the second harmonic does not equal to the second peak. We know that square wave is made up only of odd harmonics. That means second harmonic should contribute very little to our square wave. Second harmonics actually happens at 2k hertz, so we can we can use x1 cursor again to help us locate where 2k hertz is. Okay, that's 1.99 k hertz. That's where the 2k hertz is. And use that keep that y1 cursor there. Use that y2 cursor. To help us locate where the purple curve is at when the frequency is at 2k hertz so we can see that y2 right now is aligned with the crossing point of that x1 cursor and the, and the purple curve here now let's look at delta y we have minus 55 db Okay, what does that mean? So remember, dB is always talking about the relative magnitude of things, right? It's always a ratio. It does not carry any units, physical units. 55 dB, minus 50, 55 dB. Let's, uh, for, for the ease of uh, calculation, we'll give it as minus 60 dB. So minus 60 dB, if you plug back to that equation, what you can see that really, if you're talking about minus 60 dB, you're talking about, oh, uh, around 1,000 time difference between the V test test voltages compared to the reference voltages. That means whatever signal is at the second harmonic, it's one in one thousandth of the level, the value of the signal at the first harmonic. So that really tells us if we get a large minus dB scale reading from here, that really means we're getting nothing, right? So at even harmonics, 2K hertz, 4K hertz, 6, 6K hertz, we're getting really, really small values. So that also, in a sense, proved our point that square wave is only made up of odd harmonics. So uh, do the exact same steps for uh, the first 10 harmonics and fill in the chart. I will provide you with the uh, exact, exact experimental measurement readings and what you need to do is to compare it with the theoretical value in dB scale. Thank you so much for attending this lab virtually and hope you enjoy it.